and gentlemen, it's Larry Grayson. Burn me out. I say, what a gay day. Do you know, I've had the most marvellous week. I hope you've had a good week as well. And actually, this week, I've had it all down this side. <laughs> the week before, I had it all down this side. Can't wait for next week, can I? But you know, I just have to sit down. You see, actually, I've had a lovely, lovely week, but on, um, got the word. Last, uh, last Tuesday, I sat at home and I thought, I'll give me body a rest. And Everard was coming round to oil the knocker, and I sat there. <laughs> and he came in as usual, full of trouble, and then he decided to stay. I got him a cup of beef tea, and uh, so I said, what should we play tonight? He said, let's play, have a game of chess. So I sat there, and uh, he kept dozing off. And I thought, uh, what's the matter with him, you know? And, and I never said it for a time, and he went right off, and I said, Everard, if you don't lift your bishop... <laughs> I said, I shall not play. He said, well, don't, then, he said, because you're not very good at it anyway. I said, now, look here, Everard. <laughs> I said, you're getting far too cocky. <laughs> far, far, far too cocky, I said. I said, I, I know the trouble. You're not eating enough. You eat just like a canary. Peck, peck, peck all the time. What you want is some meat inside you. I said, what you want is some... <laughs> I said, you want some steak, I said, some heart and some liver and kidneys, that's what you want. Well, he hadn't been gone ten minutes, I heard a knock on the door and I thought, who could it be? I wasn't expecting anyone. So I shouted out, friend or foe? <laughs> Nobody answered, so I went to the door and it was Desperate Dot. <laughs> she looked embalmed, she stood there. <laughs> I mean, oh, she's funny. Oh, Dot. Oh, you should see her. I mean, she's only got to see a pair of men's trousers on the line and she goes in a trance. <laughs> Come in, I said. Sit down. I'll get you a bowl of water. You can soak your feet. Well, she sat down. <laughs> and I said, well, um, how's the treatment? So she said, oh, I found a wonderful man, she said. A wonderful man with a marvellous touch. Oh, I said, how lovely. <laughs> I must tell Everard. <laughs> I'd perhaps go myself, because you know me. I mean, I'll try anything once. <laughs> Twice if I like it. I don't know. <laughs> she said, oh, he's very good, she said. I said, is he very expensive? Oh, no, she, he does it for pleasure. <laughs> I don't know, I should definitely go then. So I said, well, I said, when's the best time to go? She said, well, the best time to go is at the weekend. Well, I said, I can't go this weekend. I'd love to, but I can't go this weekend. I said, because, you see, some friends of mine have invited me to a frolic. And um, <laughs> I haven't been to a frolic for years. <laughs> now, you'd better stay right back and gather up the loose ball. And the way the ground is today, they'll be bouncing everywhere. So you really got to give it to them, right? Kick them in the guts, hit them in the groin, elbow in the crutch, anything you like. Heads in, bite their ears off. Let them out. Let them out. Yes. Why didn't you throw yourself at his feet? Throw myself at his feet? But I hardly know the man. <laughs> Ooh.
I'm going out tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet an international artist from Argentina, the incredible Teddy Payroll. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You're superb. Now, for my next trick, and being myself from Argentina, I would like to use something typical of my country, boleadores. But for that, I need the help of another person. I need an assistant. Perhaps someone in the audience would like to come up here. Excuse and me, Mr. Help. Chair. I'm very sorry, but Director Dexter says you can't use anybody from the audience. He said they come to see the show, not to be involved in it. You see what yes, I mean? you, you have a point there. Yes, thank but you. perhaps you can help me. Yes. Maybe you can get me someone to do this trick with me. What sort of person you're looking for, Mr. Pierce? Well, I need someone with courage. With courage. With guts. With guts. With a sense of adventure. A sense of it. I think I've got the very man for you. Excuse me a moment. Uh, Mr. Gleason, would you like to come, Mr. <laughs> We've got a week. That was a, that was a, there was always a problem every week on this show. And how are you? Oh, Oh, this yeah. is too much, the start of the show, to help yes. me. I'm so proud. I am too much, aren't I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Oh, yes. Now, we are going to do this trick together. Are we? And for this, I'm going to use the gaucho boleadoras. A oh, what? <laughs> boleadoras. Fancy. Boleadora, boleadoras is the gaucho weapon for hunting and for war. Can I have the boleadoras? Oh, fantastic. You see, uh, the gaucho, the gaucho is the cowboy of Argentina. I see. He uses the boleadoras like the cowboy uses the lasso. I'll show it to you and you're going to see. Yes. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, well. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> this. These are called boleadoras. I see. Also, they are called bolas. <laughs> this is a terrifying weapon in the hand of a gaucho. I see it's a terrifying weapon in the hands of anybody, you say. Well, you can say that again. <laughs> now, what I want you to know also is that the gaucho uses the boleadoras this way. You see, he swings the boleadoras over his head. Yes. He throws it, and that way he catches his enemy. I see. It's like the Australian boomerang. They throw it, and it catches their enemy by the neck. Well, it's about the same oh, idea. Yes. yes. The difference is that while the Australian catches the enemy by the neck, the Argentine gaucho catches them by surprise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How surprised the enemy is when he's caught by oh, the other. Oh yes, I'll bet. Now, I would like you to balance some candles for me in your head, in, in, in your hand and your head, I and see. then you leave the rest to me. Yes. All right. I'm going. Sorry. <laughs> Just, Will you take him away? Uh, sit down and... Are you all right, are you? Well, yes, absolutely. Don't worry. Yeah, don't, keep, don't keep touching me all the time, Bertha. I've told you about it before. Didn't I see you wearing glasses today? Ah, uh, yes, but I want to do this a little more different. Just hold it there. Uh, that's great. A song. Oh, that's a great idea. Happy birthday. Oh, stop it, Bertha. Bertha, stop it now. Now, give me some gaucho music, please. Oh, that's good. Oh, right. Now, I'm going to put out the flame first, and then I'll hit the candles off your head. Oh, yes. Yes, you see them. Here goes the first. Yes. See, the flame is out. And the one. Don't move the head too much. No. Are you happy now? Oh, yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> All right, here we go with the second one. The flame is out. Here's the second one. Don't move, don't move. Right. Now, this 
Pieces the last one. I don't mind telling you this is a little dangerous. Just a little. You don't, don't worry, nothing is going to happen to me. I, I can't tell her just to worry eight times. The flame is up, the flame is up. Oh, I'm actually glad. All right, don't move. Please, I'm sorry, don't applaud because I missed. I left the stand on his head, I had to go. Virgil, what's Dexter say about this? Yes, I know, I can tell him. If you know how to pray, this is your chance. And I'm sorry about this. Yes, so am I. I think you'll be able to finish the show. Ooh, I said, ooh. Nothing to it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Pero. Absolutely marvellous. And that's the end of part one. I see you in the four feathers. Sorry, so you can't go in there. Listen, I have to go. Listen, just a minute. I have to go through there because my friend Everard Falkohars has got a flight, you see, and he left this case in the car, and I've got to take it to you. Sorry, see. so you can't go. Through. Don't do that. I've got to get in there to him, you see. But he's got that, and the flight number 47465, 4321. That's a very long number, sir. Well, it's a long flight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, you can't go in there. The flight's already left, sir. Oh, it's left? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, sorry, sir. Oh, yes, all right, then. Don't keep pushing and shoving. I've got a friend like you at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Yes, it's all right, I'm just going. The, the flight's gone. You're going nowhere, sir, until you've been through my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this case doesn't belong to me, it belongs to my friend, and he left it. It was in the car, you see, so I, take it. I was going to take it through. If you are him. this side of that white line, sir, you are technically abroad. This is your case. It is not my case at all. I've just tried to... I'm Put trying it to on tell the counter, please, sir. I'm trying to Put tell you... Put your case on the counter, please, sir. I'm trying to tell you, it is not my case, it belongs to my friend. I was if just... you have your case, sir, this is your case. Now... You're getting me all confused. I don't know where I am, and I'm I a funny see. age. The keys, please, sir. <laughs> I just told you I haven't got the keys because it's not my case. I see. I have a key here, sir, that will fit any case. No one has all these robberies. If people have keys like you, talk about other people's cases. <laughs> right, you know, there should be a lot against it. Good afternoon. <laughs> Let <me> see. <laughs> What's the matter? You won't come up. <laughs> well, that makes a change. <laughs> has there something gone wrong? Got stuck halfway, I think. Yes. <laughs> I say, I say, mind your own business. <laughs> Where have you been with this? I haven't been anywhere, but he wore that in Ben Hur. Did you? Oh, I see. You see, he has these strolling players, you see, and oh, he goes around the country, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, I well, I say. And what about this? <laughs> well, he That's wore that. Thing. Well, he wore that in the way of all flesh. Did he? <laughs> it was a musical. He's left half of it in here. Yes. <laughs> What's this? Well, yes. <laughs> well, he was learning the accordion. Is that for Jack? up me. Give it him. Uh, hello. What's this, then? I suppose this, this is where the Pepper Hellini is hidden, is it? I hope you've washed your hands. <laughs> My God, he's going to eat it. <laughs> Just as I thought. What? A banana. <laughs> See, it's not a pomegranate from here. <laughs> not here. I say, what about this? <laughs> Why was he taking this to the Isle of Wight? No idea. They have electricity in Ventnor, haven't they? I believe so. Well, it's too big for a cake. <laughs> it's too small for a midnight service. <laughs> lies! Lies! 
You realize the commandant will want to know an explanation of the contents of this case? Confess, British pig! He thinks we're doing cold hits. <laughs> ah, so that's it. What? Pornography. Oh, that's it, is it? No. Dirty books, pictures, he, he films, it that's it. Oh, yes, God. girls flaunting themselves, flaunting their flesh, lying down, standing up, riding horses, playing snooker. Yes! <laughs> So this is it, is it? <laughs> the tail of squirrel napkin. <laughs> Perhaps you're working for some foreign power. Certainly not. And what's this? I don't know foreign power. What? That a letter. Ah, a letter and it's in code. So you are working for a foreign power. I'm not your Where's control. your accomplice? Ah, this is it. Brenda Alcock, Lady in a Veil, Care GPO Portsmouth. 4JK8QT. So that's the code, is it? Never mind the letters. Brenda Alcock, did you say? Yes. What has she got to say? The letter is addressed, Dear Everard. That's him. Who's the case belongs to? This is his case. I was shocked to hear that I am not in your production of Little Women or Fanny by Gaslight. <laughs> but I know who's been putting it in for me. Don't we all? <laughs> That walking medicine cabinet, Larry Grayson. Walking medicine cabinet? What? How he got the leading board to dance, I shall never know. I saw him in the Scarlet Pimpernel once, and I've seen better legs on a frozen turkey. <laughs> and he sounds about as French as Slack Alice. Slack Alice, that's another code name, is it? Oh, I know it well. They should have done him a favour and put a new blade in the guillotine and cut off his performance. <laughs> Sang April in Paris, it snowed for three days. That's a lie. It snowed for two. And as for his acting, he makes... What's this? He makes Minnie Caldwell look like a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company. <laughs> well, I, for one, will not bend over backwards just to get a meaty part. <laughs> Think on, it says. And it's signed... Brenda Alcock. Right. If the clothes fit and the case is proved, you realise that not only can you be fined five thousand pounds, but I can also imp imp I can also impound your impedimenta. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> I would. Right. Into the room with him. Into the room, please, sir. This way, sir. Don't Come you on. manhandle me? On, Don't you do that? Come on. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? Frisk you. Frisk me. <laughs> Stop it. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's song time. And this week, once again, I've had many, many requests to sing songs like Little Boy, You've Had a Busy Day, <laughs> Good Night, Little Drummer Boy, and When the Worm Has Turned. But <laughs> the one that came top of the pile is this one, and I hope you like it. <laughs> And where did that coat come from? <coughs> Who told you to wear that? You're all glitter. And you know sequins don't suit you. <laughs> I'll speak to you afterwards. <laughs> and how's the ferrets? <laughs> did that one live? <laughs> Very surprised. <laughs> <coughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> Whenever I hear water, it always wants to make... <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to sing. <laughs> oh, what has happened to me? I am the silliest one. I'm a son of a gun. And I'm riding on high. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> what has happened to me? I'm the silliest goose. <laughs> I'm a happy papoose. And I'll tell you just why. Yes, I'll tell you just why. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Sing when I'm walking, I dance when I'm talking. Oh, how lovely it feels. Just to be, to be, to be head over heels in love. <laughs> can't sleep a wink, can't even think. Miss about half of my meals. Cause I fell, I fell, I fell head over heels in love. <laughs> Every night I'm the mooniest one, the juniest one, the looniest one. Love's made me the crooniest one. Spring has come, oh, tra la la la. My heart is a flutter, I stammer and stutter, but oh, it only reveals that I am, I am, I am head over heels in love. <laughs> when you walk, when you talk with the one you love Don't you know just how lucky <laughs> you are? <laughs> when you walk <laughs> you With the moon above it's the greatest <laughs> of blessings <laughs> by far. <laughs> and you, well, I'm fed up. <laughs> How lucky you are. Every night I'm the moodiest one, the juniest one, the looniest one. Love's made me the crooniest one. Spring has come, oh, tra la la la. My heart is a flutter, I stammer and stutter, but oh, it only reveals that I am, I am, I am, straight through the heavens above. I'm head. I'm head over heels in love. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for looking in. See you next time. See you next week at the same time. I'm just going to lie down. I'm all in. <laughs> Ta-ra. Take care of yourselves. Remember, I love you very much. Ta-ra. I love you. Yeah.